As an example, let's say the user who clicks the X button, how do we handle that event? Well, the way that we would handle that event is we would say if e.type is equal to SDL, SDL quit, uh, we are going to set running to false. And this is a very simple example. So the reason I'm setting running to false is because I have this loop here that just keeps the program running. Uh, if, if we see that the event type that happened was the quit, so the user clicked the X button under window, we're gonna set running to false. So it's just gonna fall through, it's going to uh, just return from this function, the main function, and the program exits. Simple enough, let's uh, see how that works. Okay, so we have this little rect. I'm gonna show you uh, how to handle keys with this rect a little later, but for now, we are just gonna click the X button, and as you can see, we exited the program. The reason we exited the program is because we pulled the event. The event type was SDL quit. Because it was SDL quit, we set running to false, and because of that, uh, the program exits because we just uh, stop the while loop. Okay. So let's say we want to handle a key event. So if we say if e.type is equal to SDL key down, so let's say we click a key. What do, what do we do here? Uh, well, one thing we can do is we can say see out key was pressed. And when we execute this, and we click something, as you can see, the terminal is echoing out, key was pressed. But here's the problem. We want to know which key was pressed in particular, right? So you don't really care if a key is pressed. We want to know what key was pressed uh, in detail. And to get the exact key that was pressed, we actually have to uh, check every single one. So. I think most people recommend using a switch statement for this. So the way you do that is you just say switch, and then you're gonna switch on uh, this variable e dot key dot key sim dot sim, and you just uh, give it a case. Then if the case matches, you're gonna basically just uh, echo out this key was pressed. So let's say case case SDL K right so we, if the right key is pressed what are we gonna do we are going to do C out right key was pressed okay so let's see if that worked and we're gonna click the right key. And when we click the right key, we see that the terminal writes, a right key was pressed. That's good. Okay, so what if we are interested in what happens when the right key is released? So we can basically do the same thing. We can say if, actually, I think I should make these if else statements. Okay. We're gonna say e dot type is equal to SDL, SDL key up. So when the key is released, what we're gonna do? Uh, this is basically gonna be a mirror of the previous, except uh, in reverse. I'm gonna say switch e dot key dot key sim dot sim, and here we are going to check the case case SDL K right. So if the right key was pressed, we are going to see out right key was released. And L. Okay, let's execute this again. Then we are gonna click the right key. As you can see, key was pressed, released, pressed, released. Okay, good. So what can we do with this? Why is this good? Actually, I think you should also add a break. I mean, I don't have any other, I have no other cases here, but I think we should also add a break statement. 
break. Break. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we have this rect. This rect is at position 1010 and its size is 250, 250. Now, what we can do is we can say, okay, so when the right key is pressed, we are going to increase the X position of this uh, rect by 50. So dot X plus equals to um, 50. And when it's released, I, I guess nothing because I don't know. We're not gonna make it go backwards, but okay. So we're gonna get this. I'm gonna say if this rectangle, if um, the right key is pressed, we're gonna increase this rectangle uh, by 50. And let's execute this and let's see what happens. So we're gonna click the right button, and as you can see, the position gets increased by 50 every time we click. Okay, that's good. Uh, what else you can do is you can check for a mouse motion event. So you can say else if e.type is equal to stl mouse motion. So if the mouse is moved, uh, the mouse position. And we get the mouse position by essentially getting the stl. <clears throat> you run the function called stl mouse get state or stl get mouse state. And what you do is you pass in two integers and those integers will be populated with the state of the mouse x and y position. So to do that, we do uh, stl get mouse <coughs> state. Then we are going to pass in the address of two integers. Uh, because I don't want to define two integers, I'm just going to use the rects x and y position. So we can say r.x, r.y, and these, has to, these have to be addresses because um, it's going to populate those, and then we're going to close that, right? Okay. So we are have this, uh, we have this window, and as you can see, when I move the mouse, uh, the mouse movement is an event, and because it's an event, uh, it, it's, it's going to set the position of the X and Y of this rectangle to the position of the mouse. Let's close that. Um, yeah, so... That's pretty much all you really need to know with the event system. The event system is pretty simple. What it does is uh, it, it just gets all of the events that happen. Uh, then it, you can use this while loop to uh, basically uh, go through every event and then check which event it is. And if it's the event that you want to handle, you can handle it. Otherwise, it's just gonna uh, you're just going to let it go. So here in this example, we're handling the STL quit, STL key down, STL key up, and STL mouse motion events. Uh, otherwise, we don't care. We don't care what happens. Uh, just to show you again. As you can see, when the mouse moves, I set, I set the position of the rectangle to be the position of the mouse. But if I move, um, if, my, if I click the right key, the position is no longer the position of the mouse. But if I move the mouse again, the mouse gets uh, set to the position, or the rectangle rectangle gets set to the position of the mouse. That is essentially how the event system works in SDL. Thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next video.